right, hello and welcome. We are going to uh, be going through a bunch of solutions for uh, the upcoming chapter test on 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I put onto Blackboard a uh, big set of questions uh, that are representative of the questions you might see on a test. And um, I'm just going to go through a bunch of them and I'll, I'll split it into a bunch of videos like I did last time. So this first video is going to be from chapter 3 and uh, section 3.1. Okay. This is the question that I'll be going over. Let f of x equal negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. We're going to express f in vertex form. Find the vertex of f, find the x and y intercepts of f, and then find the maximum value of f. Now on your test, you can do this in whatever order you want. I'm going to do them in this order. I'm going to find the vertex of f first. I know then that's going to be either the max or the min value of f. And then I'm going to, let's well, see if I can find the other things easily enough. Okay, so here's our function, negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. All right, just to give us more space, there we go. Okay, vertex for any parabola, uh, the vertex, remember we've got this value a, we've got this value b, got this value c. Uh, the vertex is always at the x coordinate equal to the opposite of b over 2a. So the vertex has the x coordinate of negative 6 over twice negative 3. Well, that's negative 6 over over what? Negative 6. So this is 1. So we plug that in to find the y coordinate. Negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 2. That gives us uh, negative 3 plus 6 plus 2. So that's 8 minus 3, which is 5. All right, so the vertex, this is the answer to part C. Find the, sorry, uh, B, find the vertex of F. Vertex is the coordinate pair 1, 5. Okay, so this is the vertex 1, 5. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna do part D. This is the next easy part. Find the max min value of F. Okay, it's either a maximum or a minimum. Remember a parabola looks like this. If the leading coefficient A is positive or it looks like this in the case where a is negative, which is the case for us. We have a negative 3 for a, so our parabola looks like an upside down uh, cup. It looks like a frown face, right? So this point here is the vertex right in the middle, and it takes the maximum value. So b was the vertex, d is the max value, so this is, you can call it whatever you want. I'll say y maximum equals 5. How do I know it's 5? That's the y coordinate of the vertex. The vertex is the highest point. So whatever its height is, is the maximum value of the parabola. So that's parts b and d. Now we're going to express f in vertex form and we're going to try and find the x and the y intercepts of our function f. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this in uh, in vertex form first, and uh, I'm just thinking about how to do that here briefly. Um, there's a couple ways you can try to do this. The first way is you can you can take what you've got here and try and complete the square. That's the typical brute force way of doing this, um, and you know that might be the best way to do this. Um, we can, alternatively, try and leverage this fact. We know the vertex already. Vertex form, again, is this form where we go uh, y equals something times x minus h squared plus k. This is the vertex form for a parabola. We already know the vertex. We already know h and k. So this is a 
times x minus 1 squared plus k, which is 5. So the probably the easier way to do this one, instead of completing the square, is to use this, multiply it out, and think about what we should have there. But I think it's even easier than that. I think we know what a should be. Um, because there's no other x squareds here. a has to be negative 3. And we can verify that. And in the case where this goes south, I re-record this whole thing. <laughs> so here we go. I claim this is this is the vertex form. We'll just multiply it out. This is negative 3 times x minus 1 squared. So that's x squared minus 2x minus, excuse me, plus 1. Just make sure I've got that. x squared minus 2x plus 1. Yep, plus 5. Now what do we have? We've got this is equal to negative 3 x squared plus 6x. Things are looking pretty good so far. Minus 3 plus 5. And if we combine these two, it turns into a plus 2, which is exactly what we have to begin with. So we found it. This is vertex form. Okay. So I mentioned another method that you could use for this. Um, I found the vertex first with the intention of doing this, uh, this method, because it can work out really nicely. In the event where it doesn't work out nicely, what you do is you take your original quadratic, which we have up here, and you complete the square on it. So that's something that we've done before. I've got videos of that online. Uh, I'll just reference those here and say that's what you should do. Okay, so that is, what's that part? That is part A. So now we've got to find the x and y intercepts of f. All right. So x and y intercepts. Well, we can quite easily find the y intercept. So the y intercept, we remember, is, is where the x coordinate is 0. So what we'll do to find the y intercept, just like we do in every graph to find y intercepts, we just plug in 0 for x. So I'm going to do that to the original one up here. If you plug in 0 for x, you get 0 plus 0 plus 2. So the y-intercept is 0, 2. Okay, I didn't write that out, but that's pretty, pretty easy to see. 3 times 0 squared is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. So 0 plus 0 plus 2. So the y-intercept is 0 comma 2. And then, sorry I'm boxing my answers as I go here. Um, for the x-intercept, what do we do? We, we set y equal to 0, because the x-intercepts always occur at a height of 0. So this is equal to um, the original equation. You can do that, or you can set it equal to um, your intercept form and you know it's it's not too bad if we start with the intercept form in this case we'll do that one so what we do is we set it equal to again either this intercept form we found just now or we set it equal to the standard form that we were given either way works um, it's just uh, it's up to your preference so I'll, I'll illustrate this with the vertex form. So we're trying to find, uh, let me erase some of this work. We're trying to find um, oh man, Microsoft Paint is not as nice. Go figure. It's not as nice as some of the other things, but <laughs> Here's A, there's B, 
and we're working on C right now. on finding now the x intercepts. So we set this equal to 0 and uh, we try and solve, which isn't so bad. Let's subtract the 5 over. We'll divide by the negative 3. Let's square root both sides. The whole 5 thirds is under that root. We'll keep in mind we've got a plus or minus here because of that square rooting of something. That was squared. So it's x minus 1 equals plus or minus the root of 5 thirds. Then we add the 1 over. So this is 1 plus 5 thirds underneath the radical or minus. Okay. So what are our x-intercepts? They are the points. I'll list them out here. They are the points 1 plus square root of 5 thirds, comma 0, and the point 1 minus square root of 5 thirds, comma 0. Okay, uh, so that's it, A, B, C, and D. We, we took our standard form quadratic or parabola. We put it into vertex form. We didn't do it first, but that's okay. Uh, we found the vertex uh, one comma five. We then found the max because it was given to us in the vertex. Uh, and then we found the y-intercept by plugging in zero for x and solving, or just computing. And then we found the x-intercepts by plugging in zero for y and solving or computing whatever you like to call it. Okay, let's move on to the next question. If I can find my vertex. There we go, it's right there in the middle of the screen. Okay, the next question is let g of x equal 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 and here we go, b and d. <laughs> Okay, so when I chose this question, uh, when I chose this question, I uh, was cautious. I did not want to give you something that was too difficult. So we want to do parts B and part D from above. So here we go. What was part B? I'll just find the vertex. And what was D? I'll just find the maximum value. I was cautious. I didn't want to have to make you go through vertex form with something that was possibly really bad. So let's let's do B. For finding the vertex, remember we always compute the x-coordinate first just by looking at the coefficients A and B from our standard form. So we have x is equal to the opposite of B over 2A which for this quadratic is negative of negative 6 over 2 times 3. So what does that give us? That gives us positive 6 over 6, which is 1. So, so far for part B, we know the vertex has the x-coordinate of 1. And what is the y-coordinate? Well, we just need to plug that in. So y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1. And that gives us 3 minus 6 plus 1, which by my arithmetic at this very moment is negative 2. Okay, so that's part B. We found the vertex. Part D asks for the maximum or the minimum value. Just like the last problem, we remember if A is positive, if A 
is positive, the vertex is the minimum value. If A is negative, the vertex is the maximum of that parabola. So what is the max or min? Which one is it? Well, A is 3. So this is a minimum. And what is it? It's negative 2. It's the, it's the height of that vertex. Okay, so there you go. I've done uh, two problems real quick on section 3.1. It's pretty pretty typical of what uh, what you'll see in section 3.1, um, solving parabolas for specific things about them, putting them into different forms, uh, uh, finding x-intercepts, y-intercepts, factoring parabolas, um, right, things like that. So I'll move on with another video here on section 3.2 next. I hope that helped.